Well, hey everyone. There's a lot of folks these days interested in living off the grid. Some folks are doing it, others are dreaming about it. And for those that are doing rather than dreaming, I feel it's safe to say that the biggest problem that they encounter is with refrigeration. Or should I say, the lack of refrigeration. When I started my off-grid journey in 1984, the lack of refrigeration was a genuine hardship for me. Believe it or not, I lived the first two years of my cabin life out of a Coleman cooler. I got ice at a neighbor whenever I could. I'd bring jugs of water to work, and every other day I'd bring jugs of ice home. <laughs> I was young, I was broke, and I did what I could with the resources that I had at the time. Okay, I'm happy to report though, over the 35 years we've come a long way. We've got the refrigeration issue figured out. But even in this day and age, we're still achieving the task in a very simple manner. And we still have not employed solar power. We have not brought solar power into the game, although it is in the plan for the future. Yep. Now, I'm making this video by request of my subscribers. I've had a lot of new folks come on board in the last month or so, so a lot of questions coming in about how we handle the task of refrigeration. So, I've decided to make this video, uh, bring you in behind the scenes, show you how we handle our task, and how, even if you don't have the interest in living off the grid, some of the information you might pick up in this video may help you carry on some degree of normalcy through a major power outage, all right? This information can help everyone, all right? So let's get started. <laughs> I have a new swivel chair in my workshop. All right, for this segment, let's start off with a very simple manner of refrigeration and then work our way up to more high-tech applications, all right? Because believe it or not, here at the camp, from about mid-October, late October to early April, give or take, we spend absolutely nothing for refrigeration during that time. We spend nothing because we utilize Mother Nature much in the way that they did in the old days, but with an added twist. All right? So let's go on in the camp, and I'll show you what we got going on. Anyone that's lived out of a cooler for an extended period of time knows how frustrating that can be. Every time you want something, you're in there digging, everything else is falling down in on top of itself. It's absolute madness. So I went from a cooler to an antique icebox. Hey, after all, right, the iceboxes were designed to keep food cold in a more convenient manner. You have a compartment for your ice and then shelves so you can get all your food nice and convenient without it all falling down on top of each other. So I got one of those, and it looked awesome in the cabin. Those old iceboxes, they have a charm to them. But I got to tell you, I was really disappointed with its performance because it wasn't keeping ice as long as the cooler did. The cooler performed better for ice retention. So it, during the cold months of the year, I put the ice box out on my porch, and that helped tremendously, but now it was that much more inconvenient for me to go outside every time I wanted something out of the ice box. I went from there to a propane refrigerator. That worked fantastic. It was the solution to my problems. And I still use one today, but this segment right here and now is about how we have free refrigeration. And propane costs money. But we'll get to the propane here in a little bit. All right, so the icebox is a great idea, but it had its flaws. I put on my thinking cap, I designed my own icebox. And I have it. I built the first one in my other cabin in New York. So the people that have been subscribed to me have seen that before. And then when we were fixing this place up, I built another one right here. And it's right here in the kitchen. Just as convenient as a refrigerator. Okay? As far as I don't got to go outside and dick around with a cooler either. All right? But it's right here in the kitchen. It's built on an exterior wall. 
I let the cold air from Mother Nature into the box and it keeps everything cold between five and six months of the year. Then in the summertime, we put ice bottles in here. Okay, the way that we do it, we have a small gas refrigerator right here, which I will show you, and the ice box right here. During the summer months, we use the gas refrigerator to keep stuff, sensitive items like meat and dairy, stay in the propane powered refrigerator. The ice box, we make ice with our propane freezer and we use the ice box to store stuff like cheese, vegetables, eggs, salad dressings, things of that nature. Then when the cold months come along, the ice box and the gas refrigerator reverse rolls. We use this with the cold air coming in from outside to store meats and dairy and things like that. And we put ice bottles in the propane fridge with the fridge shut off to store the salad dressings and the produce and the cheese and the eggs. And this handles the task, like I said, for pretty close to six months for free. So let me show you my ice box in my little gas refrigerator. Okay, so this setup here is built on an exterior wall. That's just a cabinet above and a cabinet below, and that's a trash bin over there. This here is an ice box. You can see how thick the insulation is in the door. All right, and in here, this is surrounded by six inches of styrofoam. Then it has a little door where I let cold air coming in from outside. In fact, right now I can feel it blowing in because it's coming in like a vacuum now that I've opened this door. How wide I keep this open is determined by the temperature outside. Today it's around 38 degrees, it's wide open. If it's below zero, I have it closed completely. I don't want everything in here to freeze, so I just adjust this with the temperature outside. Okay, in the summertime, this is blocked with a bag of insulation. This is closed all the way, and I keep ice bottles in here. But as you can see right now, there's no ice bottles in here whatsoever. Now here is a little gas refrigerator that I salvaged out of an old camper. But right now, as you can see, it's not even hooked to anything. It hasn't been running on any propane now for a few months. Inside it... Okay, so in here we keep some cheese and some eggs and some produce. Now I'm fully aware that warm air rises and cold air sinks. And people are going to say that my ice bottle should be on the upper shelf. The only reason why they're down on the bottom is because the upper shelf isn't deep enough to hold an ice bottle of any decent size. We had put them on the bottom just as an experiment, and it keeps everything at a good temperature. It works, so we don't mess with it. We've been doing it this way forever, probably always will. Then when the temperatures outside warm up, to the point where we need to put ice in the ice box, these two will reverse rolls once again. The refrigerator will get hooked to the propane line, we'll fire it up, we'll keep the sensitive items, the meat, the dairy and things like that in the propane fridge. The ice box will have the produce and the cheese and the eggs. And it's not as convenient as a full-size refrigerator but it gets us through the task at zero expense for about half the year. During the winter months, the ice box works along the same principle as a cold room. We use the screen porch as a cold room as well. The downside to using a cold room is the temperatures will fluctuate as quickly as they do outside. The ice box will maintain the temperature and it will fluctuate very slowly due to the thickness of the insulation. In fact, in the summer, when the ice bottles have completely melted, it'll maintain a temperature of around 45 degrees throughout the day. This little project has exceeded my expectations by far. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm trying to make a video. How am I going to make a video with this? <laughs> okay, get down baby. All right. 
Okay, I just showed some examples of how we utilize the nice cool temps that Mother Nature provides to store food in the winter. We also use Mother Nature's nice cool temps to store food in the summer as well. And I spoke of this in a video just recently, and I'll put a link to that video in the description below. The ambient temperature of the ground maintains itself around 50 to 55 degrees. I buried an aluminum truck box in the crawl space beneath my cabin, and during the winter, the temperature in the box holds right around 45, between 45 and 50, and in the summer, it maintains around 50 to 55, which is perfect temperatures for storing cheese, eggs, produce, fruits and vegetables, that sort of thing. The beauty of having that box under the cabin frees up a lot of space in the ice box. If I go to town and I buy multiple heads of lettuce and big bulky packages of spinach and that sort of thing, it's going to take up all the room in my ice box. When I can store them in the box underneath the cabin, it'll maintain a good healthy temperature and it costs absolutely nothing to run it. Now that's just another never fail option for storing certain food items without any power consumption whatsoever. Okay, I had to pick this back up in the workshop. Little Tildy was climbing all over me. She's a cute little bugger, but it's hard to film and retain my thought process with her in my lap like that. So let's take a minute and talk about gas appliances, refrigerators and freezers. I love the darn things. I've been using a gas refrigerator my entire life. Now, I've used electric ones too, but I was a little boy that brought us up here to the deer camp and we had an old gas refrigerator and I just thought they were cool. Literally, pardon the pun. But, you know, whoever designed those things, whoever thought it up really had their thinking like cap on. You gotta admit, right? Because if that little flame goes out, it won't keep food cold anymore. And that's just the opposite of our normal thought process in regards to a flame, right? <laughs> Pretty cool setup. The beauty of the gas appliances are, as long as that burner is kept clean, they will operate fairly flawlessly forever. There's no compressor, no moving parts, nothing to wear out. They are just fantastic. And in an off-grid situation like I have, where you have no solar or minimal solar power, the gas appliance allows you to carry on with some normalcy, like a normal person, a normal household, even way up here, far away from a power pole, okay? The gas freezer I have is pricey, and it burns a little more than a pound of propane a day, so it's really not cheap to run, but as opposed to running to town all the time to restock, I can have a freezer full of food here. So it's a justifiable expense, and it's an affordable convenience. The little gas refrigerator I have in the camp runs a little less than a pound a day. Again, it's an affordable convenience. I made a video a while ago how you can get off-grid appliances for nothing or next to nothing, and I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. The little fridge that I have in there that I showed you came out of a 1973 camper. It still works flawlessly. Can't argue with that. Okay, so this is the gas freezer that we have. Absolute love having it. We bought this in 2017, and as far as I'm concerned, this is a must-have for our lifestyle up here. It lets us stock up on a lot of food, uh, makes our ice for our ice box all summer long. It's just awesome. It's very simple to operate. You don't have to fiddle around with matches to light it. You just set the controls to what it says in the owner's manual and it fires right up. It's been fantastic for us. Normally, I had this hooked to a 100 pound tank. I'm in the process of 
making some changes. It's just hooked to a 30 pounder temporarily because I'm going to be making some changes in this shed. Then I'm going to be running a copper line and this will be hooked to 200 pound tanks. And like I said it burns a little over a pound a day so on 200 pound tanks it would probably last maybe 175 days give or take. It's not real cheap to run it but it's a, an affordable convenience for us up here. I would rather have the expense of running the freezer and having the freezer than not having the expense and not having the freezer. So the freezer wins in that regard. Okay, like I said in the beginning of this video, solar power will be coming into the game this year. Yeah. When we first moved to the mountain, we were too heavily forested, but we opened it up built this workshop in the greenhouse. We're finally going to have our gardens again and solar power will be set up. Once all of that is in place, we will most likely upgrade from our tiny gas refrigerator to a much larger model that is made to run on solar power. There are a lot of high efficiency units available now. I will put a link to some of those in the description below so you can check prices and specs and see what I'm talking about. But I'm not going to burn up any more time regarding those appliances because I have absolutely no experience with them. A friend of mine on solar power on the other side of the mountain has one and he has great success with it and I've heard of others that like them. So we will be looking into that and I will share that experience with you once it comes into play. All right. So I think I've answered all of the questions that have come in. I've taken you behind the scenes. I showed you how we handled the task of our refrigeration up here on the mountain. It might not be for everybody, but it might give you an extra idea sometime if you need to store some food during a major power outage. All right, so that is it for now, folks. All the best to you, and God bless. Frankie and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end, Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss. Frankie and the Boss